I knew I wasn't going to get through this. You said something to Jamel, and Jada says it all the time. Going through this journey has made you who you are, and you would never change anything. I disagree with that. Thank you. Yeah. I disagree I'm with that, that because yeah. I would not. I know. I know. I know. There's no words. If, I, if I, if I could not. change anything, I would not want to live this life again that way it is. before her. Yeah. Because she deserves so much. Any exactly. child. Exactly. Any child deserves so much better, and she certainly did. And I understand yeah. that what you went through made you the person that you are, and I get that too, but could we have not gotten there a different way? Yes, of course. Who knows what you would have been? I think that we, we say that as our own defense mechanism I do too. because I totally we agree. know that there's nothing we can do to change it. Well, I'm so not you say that to make you okay with the life that you've you've lived, but trust me, if we could do it differently, yeah. we would do it differently. <laughs> I need a minute. I'll be right back. I knew I wasn't going to get through this. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever said that to the kids that, you know, I wouldn't change a thing. I don't think I've ever said that to them. So I can really relate to this. You just... I don't want to justify that I made mistakes. I've dealt with them. I am... I have come through healing. I have faced myself. I understand what was going on in my head, the things that I was believing. But that doesn't change the fact that my babies deserved better. I am so glad I ran across this red table talk because I guess I needed the affirmation that these mothers are giving me it's just like gammy said every child deserves better see nobody could have told me back in 1979 that my heart would still be breaking in 2022 for what I put my kids through. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna to try to get through the rest of this. Let's go to the next one. And I, I understand that, Ma, I totally get it, right? And I understand from your perspective as mothers, I, I agree with you 100%. But what I will say for Jamel and I, the fact that we were lucky to make it out and the mm -hmm. fact that we were lucky enough to have the, the level of intelligence, the level of courage, and the level of just no nonsense for the environments that we had to go into, God, God has a plan. Yeah, because I was going to say it wasn't luck. It right. was God. God Amen. has a plan, right? We yeah. got we got the experiences, I believe, and the mothers that we were supposed to have so mm -hmm. that we could achieve the things that we needed to achieve. The places that Jamel has been and what she's had to deal with, she might not have been able to do that without the level of adversity that she had as a child. Right. And the same with me. Now, could we have had less trauma? I'll give you yes. that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We could have had less trauma. No doubt about it. But I, we are both grateful for the adversity because there is no way she would have been able to survive what she has survived. The level of attack. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> I get that. I, I hear something similar uh, to that uh, from my kids. They... They say they're proud of me and everything. And uh, 
I said in another video where in my mind I was absent from their lives. They said, no, you weren't. You were there plenty. And uh, I might even heard one of them or two, maybe both of them say basically what these girls are saying. So I guess it's just two sides of the story. It's really good when you go through trauma and you get on the other side of it to recognize how you have become a stronger person, that you have developed certain abilities as a result of that trauma that maybe gives you a little bit stronger skin or whatever. Uh, in case you don't know, Jam Jamel was a, I think an ESPN sportscaster. And at some point she made multiple tweets about something political and the White House got all over her about that. And she'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the video. And if I don't use that clip here, just go back to the link below to see the full video. But basically it was like, pfft, that was nothing for her because of what she'd been through. And I really appreciate what Jada said that, that the way they see it is that they wouldn't change it because they see how it's empowered them. And, and, and the trauma doesn't empower you while you're going through it, especially if you're a child trying to navigate that mess. But when you come through, Jade has been through therapy, Jamel has been through therapy, and once you come through it, then you can see how you can use that as a blessing. So, but I'm just saying, as a mother, it's, I guess I'll never get over what I put them through. I'll never forget it. And I'll always be sorry they had to go through that. And my heart will always break to see what they have gone through as a result of being separated from me um, when they were growing up. But I get Jada's side of it, too. Denise, do you feel like you have forgiven yourself? Sometimes I, I do. I know. Sometimes you kind of waver in and out so of good. it, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a part of her closed off from me still. I sense it. I don't think she intends to do it, but we mamas know, and I know it stems from that. I feel like we're you just feel, you, that we're mirrors of one another because I feel that with Jada too, and I feel it when yeah. I think about the relationship that Jada has with Willow. But I understand my role in that, and I understand why that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, um, I know, I know. I, I've forgiven myself. I know. It's hard. It's it a, is. It's an it, it, it out thing. You yeah. Know? Some days you're, you're good with it, and some days. Because you think in the back of your head, well, maybe if I'd have done just a little right, bit of right, this right, different right. life. Yeah. That's exactly what it feels like. That's exactly what it feels like. And the only reason that I think that I might deal with that more quickly in those moments is because I'm out here trying to tell y'all the right way to act. And so I know that mindsets are my enemy as well. And so I try to make sure that I'm taking my own medicine, so to speak. So, Ms. Denise, you talked a bit about you were molested by your uh -huh. uncle and people not believing you. And then on top of that, you having to endure a uh, horrific rape. Yeah. I was coming home from work. Uh, me and a friend, I dropped her off. And this guy came with a parking lot with a gun. Uh, he took me into a white van, and I, I talked to him about my daughter. I said, please, let me get back to my little girl. I'm the only one that she has in this whole world to take care of her. After the last go around, because they don't just do it once. They do a couple of times and stuff. and. And I ran and I slid under this truck bed adjacent to where the tires was. Right. And I must have stayed there what seemed like hours because I saw the van driving around and stuff. After that incident, the drug use became more, more. Yeah, it took some years. Mm -hmm. Nobody becomes a dope fiend like overnight. Right. You don't yeah. wake up to be that your goal. So it was progressive. But the fallout from that mm -hmm. was just so severe. Yeah. And even going through my own experience, I was never raped. Right. But, um, when somebody tried to rape me, I knew exactly what to do. Right. And the reason why I knew what to do is because of her. Talk to your kids. 
I don't care if you a male, a female, whatever the heck is going on. Talk to your kids about what has you twisted out. If she had not spoken to Jamil, Jamil might not have survived that attack. Let's hear more about that attack. When Jamel was 12, her mom's good friend and neighbor, Miss Francis, would watch her after school. We spent a good amount of time at Miss Francis's house, but one night when my mother had a date, she actually let me stay the night. Miss Francis's brother, Cornell, also stayed there, and I had always gotten really strange vibes from him. Jamel says, while in a deep sleep, she woke up after feeling a strange breeze on her legs. With my eyes still closed, I reached down to try to pull some additional covers over me. I was almost back to sleep when I noticed that Cornell was sitting on the edge of the bed, staring at me in a way that made me feel exposed. I was too aware of my body. A knot of tension sat in the pit of my stomach, and I suddenly felt edgy as adrenaline surged through me. And so, um... I was instantly terrified because I was like, this is not right. I immediately knew something was wrong. And just remembering parts of my mother's story that I knew at that point, I was like, okay, I need to really be calm in this moment. I'm gonna pretend that I have to go use the bathroom to get past him to go downstairs because this is like an baby. attic. Right. Right. So I'm gonna pretend to do this. I was like, oh, okay. And so I just acted like it was no big deal, but I'm terrified. So I go to make a move to go past him and he grabs me and throws me on the bed. And then that's when the other thing I remember my mother told me, kick him, what's the fight? Right. Straight up. Even at that moment, not even fully understanding the depth of her trauma, I knew whatever she was going through, I didn't want to go through that. Yeah. I was thinking, even at that age, you got to kill me. Right. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. I'm being straight up. I was right. like, you yeah. got to kill me. So I just fought, I scratched, I need, I kicked. And I think he was really surprised that I didn't mm -hmm. just lay there and yeah. just let him do whatever. And I struggled to the point where I wormed my way out, got up, ran, woke the whole house, house up. up. Hell yeah. And I was like, call my mother right now. Right. Cause yeah. she always told me if anybody ever tries to violate you in any way, tell me. Yeah. yeah. So Denise, what did you do when you got there? I just leaped. She was choking this dude out. Yeah. And then it was pulling me off of him. He said, yeah, well you was on a date. You didn't care. And that's how they do that. They, yeah. right. they throw it off, off them right. yeah. to make you look like a slut. Right. See, it's just a brutal world out yeah, there. Yeah, it is. They're mean. They're devils. They're walking demons. I don't know how else I would have handled yeah. that if I did not have a mother who had been through it. Yeah. That's right. And so by the time you were 12, your mother had already talked to you about her experience. Yeah, always. See, now, I want to take a minute with this. Oh, okay? That's important. This yep. is important, okay? Because I feel like a lot of times we don't have these real conversations with our daughters. Yep. And it's the one thing that I learned with Willow. It's okay. like, I'm not telling you this just to be yeah. an annoying mother. Mm -hmm. Let me just put you on game. Mm -hmm. right, right. You know what I mean? Right, and so right. the fact that your mom took a horrific experience and was like, no, I'm going to have to share this with my daughter and through this educate her yeah. yes. because I don't want her to go through this. And I think a lot of times through our own guilt, through our own shame, we will withhold these stories. Yeah. But I think as women, as mothers, it is so important that we share these stories yes. because that yes. saved you. I yes. Bring it full circle. Despite whatever ups and downs our relationship have gone through, you showed up in arguably the most critical moment yeah. of my life. Yes. That's how I feel And I didn't even me. ask you to show up, yep. right? I didn't have to ask you. You were just there. You were on there. the spot. Yeah. You were there. Yeah, and so that should be a boo. test and proof yes. that when it matters, absolutely yes. I will yeah. lean on you yes. when it matters. Yes. Okay. I want you to take that in, yeah. okay. what she just said, because you raised a strong, confident woman. Mm -hmm. So it might be areas that she doesn't need you in. But okay. what she knows... She knows. Okay, okay. She knows when she needs you. Okay. And you just gotta trust that. Yeah. I will. I will. Yeah, I will. and just know. And be there. Yeah, when... and be there when she calls. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, it's like, it was very critical. And then after that, you took me to the police station because I told you I wanted to file a report. 
And I asked you that. Yeah, like, you asked me, like, wow. do you want to file a report? And I said, yeah. yes, I do. And so they took down all the information and everything. And just like my mother, never heard from the police again. And that's what I would hope that my children know. Because as I've healed, I've made being there for them more of a priority. And I've allowed myself to understand the importance of that. And to this day, I know that at least my daughter will call me when she's having some challenges spiritually or otherwise. And I embrace those times because for her to do that shows trust and that she is taking advantage of my being here now, even though I wasn't before. Now, my son, he, you know how boys are. He's a grown man, and he never lets much get to him, yada, yada. But he, I even have very deep conversations about things, especially surrounding the book, because he told me that until he read that book, okay, so I'm going to put it up right here. Until he read the book, he didn't understand a lot, and it gave him a deep, understanding of me as a person so that he could understand some of the challenges that I had and align that with being a child and not being able to deal with or to understand why from his perspective he felt like I rejected him what he felt like he wasn't good enough so we've got to talk to our kids about what we've been through without fail because that's how you break generational curses a lot of us oh please really girl have been through some of the same things that our mothers or fathers have been through because that generates one talking about they stuff it i mean there's stuff that my mother got in her 90s almost uh, uh ready to leave this earth before she could finally spit it out and tell my sister some stuff that we kind of figured okay but we tell people things you tell them what you've been through so that they don't make that same mistake and the whole thing gets gets repeated in another generation see in the church we got this thing called breaking generational curses and i don't know what all it takes based on their spiritual handbook and all of that. And I'm just saying in reality, from a human position, you talk about what you've been through. You swallow that that shame that, you, that the perpetrators to bear. That's theirs to bear the shame. And you talk to your girl, your, your, your daughters and your sons about what you've been through so that they don't repeat the same thing. That's what her mother did. That's why as a 12 year old about to be accosted and go through the same thing her mother went through, she knew what to do. I'm just saying. Things that hasn't come up today, whether trauma is there or not, personality. Who? Personality mm -hmm. differences. Yes. We are not born a blank slate. We are born with a temperament that is the cornerstone of our personality. Moms there who have more than one kid, you know they were different in the womb. Yes. So we don't come here blank. Right. And I've heard a lot today from you, Jada, from you, Jamel, that I'm just personality typing y'all like click, 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 click. And one of the traits that I hear is a particular type that doesn't like to need. That is inborn. Yeah. It's not because of your environment. It's not because of your mother's. You were born with a personality type that doesn't like to need. Now, let's say you have a mother who loves to feel needed. That's a personality difference. <laughs> and so then when someone whose personality says, I don't like to need, is in relationship with someone who wants to be needed, it's mm -hmm. like opposite magnets pushing apart. And that's not trauma. It's just a personality difference. Yeah. Right. It. Thank you, God. <laughs> if I'm a metal hanger and you twist me into a different shape, baby, I'm still metal. Right. I was metal from the start and I'm metal now. So trauma shapes us, but it doesn't make us. And a lot of times we can become so frustrated trying to figure out what's the trauma and what's me and unravel that or just mm. give it all to the trauma. Got, Got it. it. Okay, so I agree with Dr. 
Anita Phillips in that we do come here with personalities, okay? But where I don't agree is that we should just chalk it all up to that's our personality. And let me tell you why. And those of you who have been on the channel a while already have heard this. It's because, yes, we don't come here as blank slates. I believe that we come here with certain traits and characteristics, natural talent, skills, and abilities for what we're on earth to accomplish, for our callings. Yes, that is true. But what is also equally true is that all of that gets twisted out and morphed by trauma. And so I also agree with her that we get a little frustrated with trying to figure out what's the trauma speaking, what's my true personality and etc. But I totally disagree with her that we should just talk it up to personality. Yes, it's personality. Your personality has become twisted and morphed by trauma. And so the key begins to be that we move back to the middle. Now, why, why do I say back to the middle? Because the way trauma twists us is it begins with our personality, the, the, what I call our spiritual birthrights, everything that we were equipped with when we came here, because those are the things that made us powerful. Those were our tools, so to speak, in our toolkit that made us powerful in what we're called to do on earth. But the way trauma does, it takes that and it morphs it. So, for instance, if you were given a personality for your calling that was powerful, outspoken, uh, didn't, and, and almost fearless in communicating, then what trauma will do is it will steal your voice and it will do one of two things. It will take that personality trait and morph it way off the scale where you're just too daggum boisterous, too outgoing. You're putting people off because now you're just way out of balance. Or it'll take it all the way down here to where you're a, a, a wallflower because you're afraid to speak up. So whatever your natural bent is and whatever it's in your toolkit will become morphed. And it is important to heal enough to re recognize where those traits have been twisted out of whack. I'll give an example. Tough girl, and you have to read about her in the book. Um, she, she was the complete opposite of the real me. She didn't care about anything. She cut you up, blamed you for bleeding, didn't want to care about how you saw her, didn't care about how you were offended. That's your problem. Okay. Totally opposite of who I truly am. Okay. But now if I just decide, oh, that's just my personality. I just don't want to, uh, I just don't want to be empathetic to anybody. No, no, no. So with respect to Jamil's mother, she feels a, a need to be needed. But then when you look at Jamil, who at some point in this, and you got to go back to, to watch the whole thing. At some point in this, uh, Gammy was saying at some time she felt like Jada was the mother and she was the child. Same with Jamel. She, like, she was, she was the mother, and her mother was a child in so many situations, okay, that, uh, that they felt like that if, okay, so, so if that was the case, and we're gonna just go by what a doctor needs to say, then we just, oh, well, you know, I just, I got a personality where I wanna be in control, and I wanna be the mother. No, 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 no. It's important to understand in what ways your natural bent and personality has been morphed by trauma. And as we begin along our healing journeys, we begin to, without frustration, understand where those things have been morphed and where we need to come more uh, full circle and middle ground with those things. I hope this made sense. It's my hope that you walk away from this week's episode with something that can get you through the week, something that you can embrace, 
as a matter of hope and healing. Always remember your greatest power is realizing the truth of who you are. Know that truth. If you enjoyed this episode, please give the video a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Also, to make an appointment to speak with me either by video call or by phone, click the link below and I look forward to speaking with you.